Hi, my name is Jim Morris. I'm one of the authors of How Life Works. In this short video, I'd like to take a moment to describe how we organize the material in part two of the book. Now, let me begin by saying that we built How Life Works from scratch. In other words, we built it from the ground up. This gave us truly an opportunity to rethink all aspects of the book. We could think about how much content um, to include. We also could think about how to organize the content. And in thinking about how to organize the content, we maintained certain sort of through lines. The first is that we really wanted to have a, a storyline, a narrative arc. We really wanted to help students make connections. We find that students sometimes struggle making connections and we can provide resources to help them. And finally, we wanted to take a modern approach. And as I described the table of contents, you're gonna see um, these three aspects show up. And now I should acknowledge right off the bat that of course there's many good ways to organize the material. And so we intentionally wrote the chapters in kind of a modular fashion. And our online platform is Achieve, which is an incredibly flexible system. So if you teach in the order of how life works, fantastic. But if not, you can easily move the content in any order that makes sense for you. So part two is titled From Organisms to the Environment. So in this section of the book, we are focusing on the major groups of organisms and ecology. And, and in general, we take the approach of we're looking at the form, function, and diversity of organisms. So let me just use plants as a way of illustration. In the plant section, which begins in chapter 27, we have an introductory chapter. And that introductory chapter is called Plant Form, Function, and Diversity. So in that chapter, we look at what's a plant, what are the major features of plants, and what are the major groups of plants. This provides a great introduction for students to plants and also gives them a vocabulary that they can use in the subsequent chapters. It also conveniently provides a kind of one-stop shop. So if you don't have time to cover the detailed plant chapters, this provides one chapter that you can use in your course. After the introductory chapters, the subsequent chapters in the plant section are organized around the big question of how did this non-modal photosynthetic group of organisms come to survive and even thrive on land? So if you think about plant reproduction, the challenge is how do you unite gametes and disperse offspring? If you think about plant physiology, the challenge is how do you incorporate carbon dioxide from the atmosphere without drying out? And then how do you internally transport sugar and nutrients and water? The challenge for growth and development, how can you use growth kind of the way animals use behavior? And how can you build a plant body to diffuse resources? And the challenge for plant defense is how can plants defend themselves, detect and defend themselves against pests and pathogens, even though they really have no moving parts and can't run away? The next set of chapters is our animal chapters, and we follow kind of a similar, a similar pattern. So our first two chapters in this case deal with animal form, function, and diversity. We talk about what's an animal, what are the features of animals, and what are the major groups of animals, which provides a great start for the detailed animal chapters that follow. These animal chapters that follow are organized in this case by systems. So there's a chapter on the musculoskeletal system, a chapter on the nervous system, a chapter on the endocrine system, and so on. The theme we use to unite those different this systems is homeostasis. How do organisms maintain that internal state um, compatible with life? To emphasize that important concept, we have a new visual synthesis on homeostasis. Visual syntheses are, well, they are exactly what they say they are. They bring together information visually. In the book, they're figures, and online, they're interactives. We have 12 visual syntheses in the book, and they all focus on big concepts like gene expression or the flow of matter of energy and through ecosystems. And in the case of the animal chapters, the homeostasis visual synthesis is used to tie together the animal chapters as well as to emphasize that really important concept. The final section is um, ecology, and here we focus on populations species interactions, communities, and ecosystems. I wanna highlight two things about the, the ecology chapters. The first is that we begin with a case, and it's a new case, and the case focuses on climate change. To me, this is a fantastic case because it's really one of the issues of our time, and therefore, I think students will be interested in it. It also gives them the tools to understand it, and I think it'll also motivate learning through the ecology section. The final chapter is on human impacts. And I think human impacts is actually emerging as a core concept in biology. You can't think about biology today without thinking about the impact we're having on our planet. And so I think this is a great way to tie together the entire book. I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for your attention.